Just reading that Drake and Kanye had dinner last night. <laughs> <laughs> How did the dinner go? Where, did, where were they? Uh, Toronto, maybe. <laughs> All right. Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got uh, the best snowboarder in the world. We got Mikey Rents on the <laughs> podcast. Th- thanks, thanks for coming on, boss. How the hell you been? Good. Thanks for having me on the pod, Jody. Oh yeah, I, I had to give uh, the last pod that uh, that you did with F and Rad a little breathing room. You know, I can't. Could, you got to watch yourself. You know, you can't just be stealing people's guests. You know, <laughs> when Chris Grenier did Todd Richards the week after, I was like, dude, there should be some like grace period with uh, the the <laughs> yeah. podcast airtime and taking my guests. But go and get no Pod oh. beef. Cheers. Cheers to a good podcast <laughs> <laughs> so what have you been up to this summer my man that or it's, well summer is over so what have you been up to this fall um would have been up to <clears throat> actually never have a good answer when people are like hey what have you been up to i never have a good answer for that but uh say like this last week i actually went out boarding one day um it was super fun actually the night the day after i saw you in in swam Went up shredding and then um, was in New York before that for the Jake Burton doc. And, Dang. And, uh, yeah, just. Those two tidbits. We'll, we'll, let's elaborate on that. So first off, you said you went snowboarding. So what's the date on that? Like late October or early November? Do you, do you have? Was that, November 10th, maybe? Have you done earlier or is that a record for you? So. Done earlier. You've done earlier. Have um, you hit October before? On what? Yeah, we had an October like two years ago where we like got a really early snow and then it didn't snow for like two months after that. Yeah, I know. That's the thing when it when it comes down like this and it snows and everyone gets excited. I always feel bad because I'm like, ah, it brings up the vibe. It helps with sales. It's great that way. Mm-hmm. But then it just starts raining and it just it's just over. And you're like, damn it. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> uh, no, I was actually kind of I was going to go up today, too. That's why originally I was like, oh, let's do it for four. And then realistically, it's like it rained at the top. Like, let's. Uh... OK, was the journey fun What's or that? was it actually fun snowboarding? Oh, the other day it was really fun. It was like good good snowboarding for sure what the snow was good like yeah it was like (laughs) it was powder for sure and it's crazy like i think it was the day before maybe me and bo went up and it was the craziest windstorm and like oh it was hectic we just went and drank a beer in the trees and went down (laughs) and then the next day me and gabe went back up and then yeah snow was good and like wasn't too windblown obviously it's like you know, if it was your last day of the season, it probably wouldn't be like your favorite day. Are you ch- are you chainsawing through the sled and like hitting rocks and you know roots and trees, or is there kind of a base already built? Oh, up? there's a base up there for sure. Damn. Yeah, there's definitely a base. There's a lot of resorts open already, so you know, lucky for them. But you also said something about you went to the Jake Burton premiere for his newest movie. Uh, give us a you know a breakdown on. You know, how was the event and how was the movie? Yeah, we were in New York. They had done already a previous screening in uh, Burlington, like for company and, and friends. And then, the, but this was like the first, I guess, official stop of the Deer Rider tour. And uh, it was sick because like I hadn't seen so many people in so long. Like the last time I was on a plane was for Jake's service like two years ago. Um, so I haven't seen like, just a lot of people from Burton, a lot of the other shredders and stuff. So it was a good uh, reunion and a good celebration. A lot of late nights. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the movie was super sick. They did a really good job on the movie. And, and uh, yeah, it was awesome. Because Burton didn't put that together. Like there was a, a third <laughs> party, right? Yeah, it's like Red Bull Media House, HBO Max. See, that's sick. Because it's kind of cool that it's not made by Burton. Because totally. then you're kind of getting this unbiased overview of Jake Burton's life instead of like Burton being like, this is what we thought it was like. It's like <laughs> yeah. They took all the pieces and then put it together. For sure. Did you, have you seen it? I haven't seen it yet because okay. I don't have HBO and I've, yeah. I've done a, 
I've set aside some time to like play around on my phone and my computer, but then I had to do the one year subscription and then I, I, or you can do it monthly, but I'm going to forget. And I know, (laughs) I know enough people in Squamish when I come back that have HBO that are going to have that. And so I'm going to watch it there, but I am really excited to watch this documentary because I mean, let's be honest here, Jake Burton. That's when you're going to come back to Squamish to get the HBO. Do you have HBO? <laughs> yeah. I'm coming over. I'm watching Go. it at your place. Would you watch it again? Yeah, it's sick. I've actually watched it a couple times. Are, are you in the movie? No. What? No. How could you not be in the movie? I don't know. There's like a lot of like really old, like good archive stuff. Um, a lot of like different writer interviews. Seemed like, I think they did them all at US Open. Um, But yeah, I don't know. There's some good stories in there for sure. I did hear that Jake Burton once said, if I could be any snowboarder in the world, I would be Mikey (laughs) Rents. I heard that. And I I forget who I heard that from, but it was like a legit source that like knows Jake really well. And I was like, have you heard this before? I had heard it. Yeah. There you go. How are you not in the movie? Uh, (laughs) They fucked up. HBO, you missed out. (laughs) Jake Burton's favorite snowboarder is Mike Benson. I've never heard that from him, but uh, I'm sure he's just referring to my pursuit of powder. Yeah, which is a very, um, you've navigated that quite well. You're, you look like you like powder. I mean, from an outsider who's watching your Instagram and knowing you, I'm like, I genuinely think this guy likes riding pow, like, (laughs) you know, (laughs) like a lot. Like he's definitely not trying to fool anybody heading up to Seymour and, you know, filming on some rails every once in a while. It's like, yeah. Why didn't you ride any rails? Why did Mikey never go down the rail? Rabbit I was like, I just was never good at rails. <laughs> <clears throat> never. Like I tried for sure. Like, you know, like when like, uh, like technical difficulties and stuff was out and it was like, you know, JP in the like, camo pants like in the yeah. grim beanies like i was i was trying hard at that time for sure <laughs> and i just never like i can i realized pretty early that like i wasn't good at them so i didn't really like pursue them as far as filming or anything you but i did out. that's crazy that? i said you just tapped out that seems crazy well i, I do have a first the, like you know that that blue kink rail in canmore yes I was the first. What? <laughs> no way. Are you serious? Yeah. I hit, oh, I hit that, one. Okay. that is legendary for <laughs> anyone that knows the blue kink rail in Canmore. I mean, uh, it, there's been so many iconic tricks on that rail that have been done. That was uh, a, <clears throat> it wasn't the like, Damn. it wasn't the one that like gets hit the most. It was the one like, have you been there? Yeah, there's two. There's two. Yeah. yeah. So it was the one that's like more behind the school. Yeah. That's the one I hit. I hit that one probably in 2008 nice. with Dwayne Weeb and James Beach. Yeah. <laughs> sick. That's a sick one. Cause that was the, I went to school there. Oh, what? Yeah. That's your, so you walked up those stairs every day. Like one day I'm gonna hit this. All the time. I don't know why I like, I was home for Christmas or something. And then me and Jonas Gwynn went up there and we were like pulling each other into it. Like super, <clears throat> super bad. But, uh, there's like a huge chunk of the stair that's missing from Jonas's hip. Um, yeah. <laughs> Rail or he, his hip took out something? It took out the, like a, a chunk of the, the like wooden stairs, you know? <laughs> he got worked on that. Um, but then actually like one other time, like maybe promo. Oh yeah, it was promo copy. And I wasn't going on the trip to, to ride rails but i was like oh like i know some rails around calgary or like like i can take you guys around so i did go on a road trip with those guys like to um to calgary and like you know there's that one i forget what the park is called but it's like a popular kink rail super aggressive kink but like people would gap over it like larry had some shots on it um, uh oh yeah i do i know the kink i don't know the name for it yeah. but jeeves had a lot of tricks on it simone yeah, yeah. had a lot of tricks on it <laughs> Totally. So like that was in a, in a park, like by my grandparents' house. So I knew where that was and I took no him to the blue rail. And then like, after that, I kind of actually didn't really know where to take them, but who was on the trip. It was Larry, 
uh, Simone, maybe someone else, and like um, Johnson and Ian Ruder. Dang, I think. Okay, let's let's you, you, you kind of touch base that on was, that you grew up in Canmore, but let's get get a brief overview of Mikey's childhood. Yeah, so I grew up in Canmore. Um, pretty sweet place to grow up, but like I didn't think it was sweet at the time. <laughs> Classic. And then, uh, yeah, it's sick for shredding because like there's so many different resorts around. There's like I think at the time because like there's a couple that have closed now, but there was like nine resorts within like a couple hours, and you could just kind of like you just hear that like oh Nikiska groomed their pipe or like. Uh, like like louise has a new tabletop or something like <clears throat> cruise around like that every weekend and uh there was like super good shred scene in alberta too there still is but like it was pretty like contest based there was the alberta snowboard association and pretty much every weekend was a contest and uh they were all super fun like super good group of riders um like michael check would have been around at that time too um yeah, it was sick. And uh, yeah, just an awesome way to grow up. And then it eventually just got to the point where my mom was like, yeah, I'm down to like move to Whistler. And then we moved to Whistler in, two, in 99. In 99, how old were you in 99? 14, four, it was like maybe 13 turning 14 or 14 turning 15. It'd be pretty easy to figure that out, but around there. When did you get your first box of free gear? Like that year or before? Oh no, way before that. So like I got, I started somewhere when I was seven. Oh dang, you've logged some miles. Yeah, I started somewhere when I was seven. And then the next year I got a free board from Burton. So nope. when I was eight, I started riding for the Burton rep. And then, uh, what caught his eye out of curiosity before you came? Uh, Did you I flip? mean, <laughs> no, it was more like, so I rode for Rude Boys shop, which still exists these days, which is awesome. But uh, yeah, I rode for Rude Boys and then they were kind of like chatting with the Burton rep. I never even met him. I don't even know if he'd ever seen me ride. His name's Scott Curry. Um, and basically Rude Boys lined it up that Burton was going to give me a board for the year. And then, uh, and then that kind of like, it grew. And then I got on West Beach. So I was like Burton boards and like Burton boards and bindings. And then I rode for West Beach. Anthony Vitelli was my team manager. No way. Yeah, it was Who was fun. on the team at that time? Uh, it was like Trevor, um, Kevin Young, maybe Andrew Crawford. Dang, maybe. either way. It was it. Cause like, yeah, like KY was super legendary at that point. And Trevor was like, Trevor was young too. Like I remember he had like a huge Afro and he had like just won nationals. Um, Are you yeah. guys kind of the same age? Just for reference? For Trevor? Yeah. No, he's like, he's a good, he's like maybe like seven years older than me. No way. Wow. That makes sense. Um, yeah. And I rode for West Beach and then Burton hit up my mom and they were like hey we got this like kids program called backhill and we make clothing and it's just called backhill it was like kind of like its own brand like analog for kids yeah yeah exactly <laughs> and then uh yeah they're like we're doing a photo shoot at what was the first one i think it was at the u.s open and then my mom talked to anthony like hey like do you mind if mikey rides these backhill clothes for like for this photo shoot and he was like i don't i don't really care a speech doesn't care <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah and uh anyway then from there it just kind of grew where it was like okay and now i just started to go on more photo shoots for back hill and then uh and that was kind of like my major introduction to burton where it was like the like <clears throat> yeah just being at the photo shoots and then they were just like, okay, let's keep doing this. Because they did the relationship with Sean White grow. What's that? <laughs> when did the relationship with Sean White grow? Yeah, yeah. So it was during that same time because it was like it on back hill at that time, it was like Sean and his sister, and then like 
kind of like they kind of scrounged up like whoever was young and like could kind of snowboard and so there was like some like this skater dude from socal michael pagani he like skated for volcom but he would come on those shoots like he could like snowboard decently and there was a couple other kids that like weren't really that good but like <clears throat> but they could like you know get some photos and then uh and then it's that's when it started to be like me and sean is like the shredders and then yeah and like sean had never really like had any competition before that he was always just so much better than everybody no way from the get-go yeah <clears throat> for sure well and there wasn't really that many like kid shredders really at that point like a few but when i think of yeah big team. when i think of sean i think of like competitive contest snowboarder i mean as most people do with all his medals yeah so you were contest snowboarder too and then at what age were you like i'm gonna try this backcountry thing out that's inspiring to me and sean just kept doing contests were hmm. you guys kind of on the same path and at one point you were like i'm gonna make a u-turn here because this isn't the path i want to be on mm, can yeah so like we would do all these photo shoots and stuff. And like, I, at the time, like I would always go to all these contests and I could like, I was like good at contests as a kid, but then as soon as I was in like, like kind of mixing up with people that were like a bunch older than me, I just like, I, like I was always into one hitters in the half pipe. And then, and then when it would come to a contest run, I could not link a run together at all. And then um, I just like, was like super inconsistent at um <clears throat> at contest so, like actually one time though we did go to what we went with burton to uh, the nippon open and there was like the regular like half pipe and then the next day they did a super pipe jam and it was just a jam and i was just cruising like just i had no thoughts of like it being a contest and that was the first prize money i'd ever won I think I got like seventh or something in that. And it was just open. I was like 14, I think. Um, but anyway, after that, um, there was actually like Sean did an interview and uh, they, they asked him like, oh, is there any kids that are like kind of on your level? <laughs> and uh, he's like, yeah, there's Mikey, but he's more of a park rider. And I was kind of like, I always thought of myself as a half pipe rider. And then I was like, damn, he's kind of right. <laughs> <laughs> like I could ride half pipe and like, that's what I grew up doing. But I was just like, I couldn't really link or run together. Like when I'm in like, you know, when you're in like 12 and under and all I had to do was like some straight airs and like a McTwist. Actually McTwist the first hit, that was my thing. McTwist the first hit. The run was like McTwist and then straight airs and then like maybe like a five at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I could, yeah, there was one year there was um like Canadian Nationals and then there was the Junior Nationals and and like in like this, so Fruit by the Foot came up was like super heavy on the on the um, on that event and in their corporate mind they, yeah they were like they were like there's no like mikey's the only guy that's gonna win this like there's no way he's not gonna win it so they put me like on the box of the fruit by the foot and stuff and i did both runs i mixed twist to the deck first hit <laughs> like i just like couldn't pull it together fruit by the foot never been back in snowboarding since <laughs> yeah they were like oh mikey blew it Oh, uh, whatever. I would have wanted um, to be Yeah, and then, like, I did, I would do, actually, I did, like, some quarter pipe contests, like, those summer, uh, like, they were called snow jams. <clears throat> I would do those and do, like, pretty good. But I just, like, wasn't good at contests <clears throat> ever. And, like, or not ever, but, like, once I got, like, maybe 14 and older, I just, like, couldn't piece it together. And then, and then it was kind of, like, I was living in Whistler, and then I just randomly kind of got into filming. Like one day we were riding the half pipe in Blackcomb and one of the coaches for uh, Whistler Valley Snowboard Club 
at the time. His name is uh, Waylon Edwards, and he had just gotten a 16 mil cam and like treetop films had given him a bunch of film. <clears throat> and we were doing follow cams through the pipe. And then like a month later or whatever, the treetop teaser came out. We were watching it in showcase and I was in it doing a crippler in the, the teaser for second win. And I was like, oh, that's that's pretty cool. And then I did like one more day, I think, with them in the wintertime. And then we shot some stuff up Brome <clears throat> film for that. And then and then after that, started to film more like film with uh, gathering. And that was kind of like my first year, like doing a winter of filming was for it with uh, Martin Gallant and the Gathering Collective for the movie called Clock. That was where like I owned a snowmobile and I was like, OK, I'm going to film. That must have been pretty wild, you know, 15 years old snowmobile. What does it just get parked in front of your driveway like some like how did that all like come to be? Because that seems like a lot for like a 15 year old kid like you want to be a part of the gathering and Martin is like, yeah, just go buy a snowmobile. And you just like, how do I even comprehend? How do I even do that? And then I buy a trailer because I don't have my driver's license. Yeah, exactly. Me out. <clears throat> yeah. I bought a trailer and a snowmobile and I just had it parked out of my mom's place. And then he would come pick it up. That's where I first met Benji too. Like they came to like pick up my snowmobile and Benji just popped out the back. Like, Hey, I'm Benji. <laughs> um and dude, the first time i ever went with martin was so funny too like we're me and my mom were living in brio at the time like on those townhouses like kind of right on the highway with the there's like those tennis courts there yeah right by staff housing um and uh oh sorry jumps on. and um so, oh yeah and then the night before i'm like hey martin like where are we going he's like you don't worry about where we're going and I just like, I don't know, I just assumed that like everything you would go by the Husky, you know, and like get your lunch and get gas. And we're pulling out a Brio and the truck just takes a right and starts going north. And I'm like, um, hey man, like I need to get some food and some gas. And like, I remember, oh, there was this other filmer in the front and I was just sitting in the back, like, so scared at this moment because I'm like I don't have any food or gas like I'm gonna die out there and um the other filmer his name was JP he was in the front he finally convinced Martin to like pull over at Alpine Cafe he's like this kid needs some food man and and Martin was kind of like yeah okay we'll get him some food and then got some food and then he's like he runs out of gas he runs out of gas like not my problem kind of thing <laughs> and we get up there oh and we're with Ollie Gagnon too and uh and then that was the one i don't know if you remember in clockwork but like there's this jump that like I, I think it's i think they call it house jump or whatever but like <clears throat> martin straight up overshot it by like at least 100 feet he like there's a there's a static shot and he just like goes sailing through anyway that we were building it and um and i was like who goes first like i had no idea like how it operated or anything and martin goes the godfather always opened a jump <laughs> i was like okay and then that was the one where he just went like like to the bottom and i was just sitting there like oh my god it's like this is insane this guy won't let me stop for food or gas and he goes way past the jumps and he calls himself the godfather <laughs> this is crazy <laughs> your first day is is perfect for sledding like some guy picks his, picks you up i like that it's martin too so that's a french canadian you're in a car with a bunch of people you don't know you get to the lot you or sorry before you get to the lot you don't even have a sandwich food water bottle you're just going out there fully clueless kind of thinking that they're going to be like your parents for the day and oh. they're all kind of like fuck this kid like forgets his lunch and everything then he self-proclaims himself the godfather builds a jump and then goes 100 feet too big oh, were you just eating your sandwich on the snowmobile and then he overshot the whole jump like this is what these idiots do out here i'm gonna go back to park yeah that's how I was, the people are always like oh you like you named martin the godfather i'm like oh no he named himself the godfather <laughs> <laughs> and he no, named himself the godfather that day uh it must have been brewing for a while because like it came up pretty seamlessly but like and nothing but love for martin uh like he he taught us so much it was just a funny first day experience 
And was he kind of your mentor from that day onward um, with the backcountry and snowmobiling? There's so many, you know, important, yeah. crucial yeah. parts mean, of learning that process. So I'm wondering who your mentor was. Yeah, I mean, that year it was like he definitely taught us so much. And um, but it was kind of like he was so used to doing that, that it wasn't like that was just how we operated was like getting people around and then because he was still filming too so he was just like i need to get these guys here so i can film my stuff too but uh yeah definitely like that year with him and then benji and oshu <clears throat> um sick alex yeah. was out there too <clears throat> he wasn't filming with us that year but then I think the next year, or actually, I didn't start filming with Oshu till promo copy. That was my first year with Alex. Dang. But um, yeah, like definitely Martin that first year taught us a lot. And like that year, shredding would have been like with Benji a bit. Benji was just learning too. Benji, I think Benji had the last part in that movie, I think. <clears throat> um, and then like John Cartwright was on the crew and he, he already knew what was up. So that was super sick, um, super underrated shredder, that guy. Um, who else was on? Yeah, a lot of time with Martin, really. Well, yeah, cause I couldn't get there without Martin. So like, he'd just come pick me up and there we go. Was it a lot of free riding back then? Cause I've, at one point snowboarding just goes into like building cheese wedges. I feel like just before then there was a lot of like freestyle riding, which I mean, you mm. uh, transitioned back into was it a lot of just jumps or are you it was a lot of jumps i can't even totally think of my part in that one but it was definitely jumps for sure <clears throat> and i knew like i know i was starting to ride step downs that year but they were like terrifying you know <laughs> give us Always. a breakdown of a step down to somebody who hasn't hit one before it's yeah like okay first yeah. go yeah so like step down <laughs> just like Basically, you build a little platform on top of like a cliff or it could just on a roll or just any, any kind of abrupt edge. <clears throat> and you can't see anything past the takeoff. Like it just looks like you're just flying into the into the valley and uh, super terrifying at first. Like I would always just go way too slow because I'm just like I was just terrified. Like I was like 14 years old and uh yeah but then you just start to like work up the confidence and start to figure it out trust yourself i guess oh yeah the first one i ever hit i forget who i was with i think, I think it was with solars and he taught me like he's like i'm gonna build you the step down and you're gonna learn how to do a cab five today on this step down and i all i remember was strapping in and then seeing the lake the valley bottom yeah, yeah. and a lake and being like well if i go too fast i'm gonna land in that lake and like yeah. die <laughs> and exactly. the exact same thing too slow too slow but now and you, you kind of just yeah and you need to relearn how to do your tricks too because like at that point i was riding a lot of park and stuff so it's like you don't have these long transitions that are perfectly manicured you have this super flat takeoff maybe with a little bit of kick and you're starting about six feet behind it you know, it's like it's a trip to get used to not a lot of 14 15 year olds adventuring into the backcountry now <laughs> i don't think i've ever even seen a 14 year old snowboarder in the parking lot before <laughs> and i like how like you would have been like i forgot my lunch again did somebody get my beacon i forgot batteries like yeah. I, I don't have that dynamic in my life and i've been sledding for like a while now and i i couldn't imagine like being like the older guy and you're not taking out a 20 year old you're taking out a 14 year old <laughs> yeah. uh, no i don't think yeah it's, it's funny for sure uh promo yeah. copy though that was to yeah. me your the breakthrough for for mikey what was that video part like for you i mean damn yeah that was definitely my first time in like a movie that <clears throat> wasn't just like canada you know and yeah, like start of the year, got the call from Pascal Gallant, who's Martin's brother. And um, he was like, hey, we're starting this new movie company because they were they had just done video games. And he was like, yeah, we got Laurie, Eddie Wall, like a bunch of the form dudes coming over to do this movie. And 
basically like it looks like it would be like me and Oshu for the for the Whistler part if I'm down or like the Canada crew if I'm down I was like that's I, I was like so stoked and um yeah we just started filming for that like <clears throat> that was pretty funny like just the way Johnson operates is like so different this is Sean Johnson to anybody that listening to he like he's like okay hey, we need to start off the year with a meeting and then like everyone like flew to Colorado and had this meeting like basically about nothing and it was like okay now we're ready to start the year and uh, I was like oh this is crazy but uh <clears throat> yeah that's when like me and Oshu and Pascal were like definitely a unit and we had like things yeah it was like pretty good pretty good season that year and Arrow was in the movie Ika um <clears throat> I'd already known Arrow like for a while, like I met him at Junior Worlds, um, like a bunch of years before. Actually, it was in er, France, Junior Worlds, and Arrow won Junior Worlds <clears throat> half pipe. He was wearing like a hockey helmet and these big bow leg goggles. <clears throat> it was sick. But um, yeah, so I knew him from there. I think he was at Junior Worlds too. That was always like a good gathering in the Junior Worlds contest. But uh, yeah, I'd already hung with Arrow. And then that's when me and Arrow like definitely like formed a crew. And uh, yeah, a lot of time with Oshu, a lot of time with Arrow. Who else was in there? Reno B. Travis Kennedy. There was, yeah, Travis that was, Kennedy. That was a sick, that movie was all time for me as like a consumer. That movie came out and I was like, damn. These guys are the best. And it was like <laughs> really good balance between backcountry and uh and rails. And obviously coming from Winnipeg, I like the rail stuff more. Yeah. But your part, I was living in Winnipeg, checking my mailbox every single day for that DVD to come in. And I remember yeah. watching that and being like, I don't care about backcountry parts. Like I would skip backcountry parts, but that part I was like into. I was like, damn, this guy's got pop. He's got flavor. He's got style. It's like, you know, you know, and it was like really baggy outfits back then in the back, back country. And it yeah, looked no. good. Like I loved how baggy shit was in the back country back then. And everyone was doing it, but I mean, like it looked good with your style and you still wear big shit out there. And it just, yeah, I don't know that, that part was complete fire to me. What was the video premiere? Like, you know, you film all year with Alex, uh, you stack all his footage you're finally in like a bigger project. Yeah, dude, that was funny. I don't know, I don't remember if I told you this one before, but uh, <clears throat> we, so like, this was at the time when everybody would premiere their movies at a, what that trade show down in San Diego? I can't even remember what it was called. SIA it was this or whatever. skateboard trade show, but that was like where everybody would go premiere their snowboard movies. Was it for whatever, but. <clears throat> we definitely were at the tail end of that and it like wasn't really popping anymore. And uh, yeah, Johnson was basically like, we rented this big place in, uh, was it Pacific Beach, I think, down like San Diego, uh, or Mission Beach? Fuck, I can't remember, <laughs> some beach. But uh, some beach in California. <laughs> rented some like big venue and it was supposed to be this big blow and I was like telling my dad like i'm in this movie and like it's gonna be this huge premiere and da, 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 da. my dad and my brother flew down and um then like the night of the premiere J johnson or someone was like yeah you and simone actually aren't even gonna be able to get in like it's 21 i was 17 21 and over and they were like there's no way we're sneaking anyone in they're like so what you do like comes to set up with me and then just stay so me and Simone went like for the setup and uh and then like the bouncers start kind of hovering around there's no like nobody's in the bar yet we're like hours early and then we're like fuck we gotta go hide in the bathroom and then we're hiding in the bathroom and then the bouncers come in and Simone just like like went into like what do we do and he started to pretend to barf in the in the in the stall and i was like you're okay man you'll be okay like like i was taking like that was gonna make it better like there's these underage kids puking and i was just kind of like oh he's just really sick and, and whatever and the bouncer was like hey you guys gotta get out of here 
So I just went back to the hotel and my dad and brother went and uh, yeah, I was like, oh, was it crazy? And my dad's like, ah, there wasn't, nobody really came. <laughs> I had Eddie Wall on the podcast and he said something about promo copy being like his ball. I mean, it was Eddie Wall's like best video part. And that video was amazing. But he's like, dude, in the States, it flew under the radar. It just didn't get the hype that it deserved. And I was like, in Canada, the distribution like nailed it. And promo copy was massive. But it just mm-hmm. didn't get the hype that it deserved. Like, because Eddie always felt like that part for him was underappreciated. And I was like, damn, yeah. that's kind of funny that nobody showed up to your premiere. It's also mm-hmm. really funny that you're in a urinal <laughs> with Simone I, and you guys probably didn't know each other that well, minus that rail trip. What was like your relationship uh, like with, <clears throat> we'd spent like a decent amount of time together that year. Oh, nice. Um, but I don't think I, I had met him before that season. I don't remember, but what do you <clears throat> remember about a young Simone? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, uh, they actually going into that winter too. I remember me and Simone went to, um, or we were like, we had snowmobiles because we we're gonna film this movie. And we're like, damn, we need to make some some sled boxes like for the back of our truck, like so we can fit it with our with a ramp and all this stuff. And me and Simone went to uh Rona here in Squamish and we we're like, they're like, hey, can you do you guys need a hand with anything? Which is interesting because if you go to Rona now, no one asks you if you need a hand. But the, we're like, yeah, we, we need some wood. We're like, what kind of wood? And we looked at each other, we're like, good wood? <laughs> no idea what we're doing. But I was thinking, it's funny now because he's a carpenter. But <laughs> yeah, we didn't end up, we bought a bunch of wood and didn't build anything. But uh, yeah, we definitely spent some time together. But that year definitely was more like Time with Arrow, Oshu, Travis Kennedy. Spent a lot of time with Travis Kennedy. Let's, you got any Kennedy stories? I feel like, damn, that guy had a lot of personality. Uh, he did. Like, he was so funny. Like, <clears throat> I was just remember his driver's license. Like, he's from Alaska, and his driver's license was an Alaska driver's license, obviously. And he's like, like this. And he had this huge pair of headphones around his neck <laughs> in his driver's license photo. And I'd, I'll never forget that. I was like, they let you wear your headphones in your driver's license photo? oh my god um i don't know he was always a trip and then but it was more like i don't remember if it was that that year and i don't know we would always so like at that time pablo lived in vancouver and the thing like whenever like all the because like larry and ika and arrow were super tight with pavo and the thing was like whenever the weather got bad we would go down to Pavo's and party in the city and like and then it would always be like here's Pavo, Ika, Arrow, Lari and Mike and Travis <laughs> it's just like a super random crew that's amazing that destruction seems like so Pavo owned a house in Vancouver no he lived like uh he rented a place on the corner of Robson like I think it's a sport deck now Oh damn! You know, down on Robson there, big sport check. Um, might have been a years yeah. before. Anyway, he was like right above that. He had a six spot. Dang. But uh, yeah, we would always go down there and party. Um, yeah, I don't. Know. To be honest, I can't. There's not like one Travis story that's sticking out or anything. But uh, <laughs> no worries. Was that promo copy the one that like kind of put you on the map with with Burton or? Was, was Burton already kind of hooking it up pretty well because of the gathering parts? Because at one point, Burton's just like, I don't know, they really, you guys collided and started really pushing out product together. Yeah, like we, going into, even like into promo copy, <clears throat> there was like the Burton North America team, or actually they kept changing the name like every, every Yeah, year. Burton's team <laughs> has been stressful since day one. It's like yeah. global, regional, you know, international. Yeah. It's like and have a pro and an AM team. Yeah, stressful then Burton. Like, ah. Then there was like the rookie team for a while. And I don't know. Anyway, whatever the name was at the time, like <clears throat> we would kind of travel around as a unit and we would basically just do like park shoots around the States, like a lot like we do like probably 10 of them a winter and we just go to like sierra tahoe is gonna build us a 90 foot tabletop we're like okay cool 
and then like um we'd go everywhere aspen wherever it was going to build us a big tabletop and then we'd just have a photo shoot and so we were kind of like we were always traveling around as a unit and like doing like team challenges uh whatever things like that and then they do like the hampton all shoots in norway Damn. so like i was already like doing a lot of burton stuff but then the promo cup a year was like my first year of like okay i'm not really gonna do those shoots anymore and i'm just gonna focus on this and like uh so like, they've supported you on that journey for forever i mean how long have you been on burton now this is like my 27th or 28th year put including like my time on the rep wow i'd say like got... some serious miles there <laughs> yeah, how's the product I'm... come over the last 28 years <laughs> changed do you like do you like the steppens have you rode the steppens step ons step ons like, I, I have I, I have ridden them and they do work really good like they're not for me for like my everyday thing but they're definitely like for the type of rider that they're for they're sick Dang. but uh like I used to ride step-ins like when they used to make them and my team manager after a while was like hey like quit riding those things <laughs> <laughs> your your reps like yo you you're, you're hurting your luck yeah <laughs> totally yeah. but um no the new ones like yeah it's not my everyday shred but they do they do work really well the wildcats like, weekend warrior uh my, yeah, what, wildcats, how did so you get introduced to this crew is like pavo your gateway in or martin like you uh, got enrolled with that crew how did this yeah. happen yeah so like pretty well really young actually like um like when going back to like that nippon open I think it was 98 maybe 98 <clears throat> anyway i met browner there and then browner was always good at like because browner was the young shredder for a while you know so like he was good at like like when i when we after that trip when i was in high school in whistler like i'd go over to browner's house for lunch sometimes like he lived right by the right by the high school but uh anyway he was always like good at bringing the the youth around keeping me around um and then just like went to we had a six burton shoot in argentina and then like I'd, I'd known trevor for a long time but i don't know just traveling around with like burton and trevor or trevor and browner um and then like knowing jf through oshu um then met dion through oshu and like i met devin like years ago at like super pipe camp um uh, but like those were always my biggest my favorite movies ever so yeah just super stoked on wildcats but then my like actual like intro into like being a wildcat or whatever like being like around whatever um <clears throat> was kind of through like arrow and Ica because they they got on like they were like got their like wildcats chains you know was that like that you're part of the club wildcats chain Pretty much. And then it turned into the jackets. Then it was like, then you got the jacket. Like <laughs> Gold the, jacket, green jacket, who gives a shit? Kind of like, that's yeah. amazing. Um, yeah. And then like, it just kind of happened that way. But I've definitely always kind of been, or not always, but I've been around that squad for a long time. And it's a good crew. <laughs> there's there's got to be a couple stories what wildcats did you guys go on a trip that you remember being you know the craziest like wildcats are known to absolutely just throw down when it comes to partying and just mm -hmm. complete chaos was there any one time that stood out to you as like well maybe we went a little overboard <laughs> um there was one there was these movies these like tom green movies called shred have you heard of that no probably anyway <clears throat> they were like we're gonna have these party scenes and we're gonna have the wildcats come in so can you hear these text messages coming through on my computer yes but okay. don't worry about it. i can yeah. just delete it okay perfect sorry i don't know how to turn that off solars mark back off <laughs> um it was this movie shred and they were like we want this party scene and we're gonna have the wildcats come in for the party scene <clears throat> And we went to J uh, to Big White, which was like to to film it, and it was kind of funny because like JF is already banned from Big White from like some party incident like 
few years before where he like stole the owner of the resort snowmobile or something. Uh, so anyway, we kind of already went in hot with JF like that. And then, uh, I don't know, we definitely like, we had like two, the movie like rented us like two big suites. And we definitely like, I don't know. I, I just I remember hearing like that we caused like $40,000 in damage. <laughs> <clears throat> And it wasn't even like, I don't know. It was just, it wasn't forced. We just got out there and we were just on one. How, how old? You're like, what, 18? Like, uh, no, I would have been like 20, maybe, maybe 20. Who is the most extreme wildcat? Who is provoking the most amount of like, let's get like, you know, you get to the hotel, you guys all drive there. You're dead sober. Who's the person that's like, let's go buy beer now and let's fucking do this. Cause we're the wildcats. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> He's just a madman. Yeah, he's yeah, he's pretty next level when it comes to that. A lot of energy, that little guy. I've seen him jump on top of tables before. It's like, <laughs> yeah, he's got a he's yeah. got a lot of energy. What was your favorite Wildcats movie? Oh man, uh, well probably just Little Bastards. I think it's just too legendary. And then Nine Lives was dope. What about Return of the Wildcats? That one was sick. Too. Diaries was pretty funny. Real long. I know. I, could, <laughs> I, I remember watching that and be like, what the fuck is this? It's kind of a head though. They're like documenting every, like if it wasn't put yeah. into a movie, it's kind of like really good bonus feature. It felt like a bonus yeah, yeah. feature constantly. It's like a big long vlog. Yeah, it was very long. Like Dion's yeah. walking around filming people. And... Oh, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. How, how, we're going to transition here quickly out of the, out of the Wildcats to, yeah. um, which I actually remember seeing you with a Wildcats jacket in, um, uh, Buffalo Bills. And you were there with like Trevor and a bunch of other people. Actually that popped in my head now. I got a question for you. Trevor texted me and he said, who brought you to your first bar? I don't know what that means. But that was, I said, I was talking to Trevor. Oh, and shit. Then, and then he texted me. He's like, oh, ask okay. Mikey who brought him to his first bar. And I was like, all right, like, sure. Dude, that's sick, actually. I totally forgot about that. Man, actually, okay. Okay, so the first one, we were in Las Lenas, Argentina. I was like 12, 12, I think. No, 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 I was older than 12. I was like 14. Not that it makes it that much better, but I was 14. And uh, it was me, Trevor, Browner, and I was using Gigi Ruff's ID. And we went to uh, the casino. And like, I don't think I got super, I don't, like, I don't think I really got like drunk or anything, but I was definitely out. <laughs> Probably had like a couple drinks. Um, but that was my first time. And then the second time, or the first time in Canada was Max Fish with Trevor and Browner. And uh, dude, we were like waiting in the line. And I remember like they had like their arm around me. And the bouncer was kind of like, uh, like obviously I wasn't of age. It was that same summer, I think. I was like 14, 15. <clears throat> the bouncer was kind of like, uh, like, I just need to see some ID and they were like, here's his ID and just kind of like, just pulled me into the bar. <laughs> I was like, okay. Oh man. <laughs> I feel like I kind of had the same thing with Browner, but at a much like 10 years later <laughs> 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 when he was DJing at that nightclub. Yeah. He's yeah. got, a, he's got a long career at the Whistler nightclubs. Yeah. He's been, he's been pulling it through since day one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those guys. Speaking of Trevor Browner, all of those uh, those Wildcats, which have helped mold the Whistler backcountry big time. Mm -hmm. What do you think in backcountry snowboarding has kind of changed over the years? Are there anything that you're like, damn, I wish it was kind of more like this? Like, what happened to this? Mm -hmm. like, how has backcountry snowboarding changed over the years from you? You go, you go from the gathering until now. I mean, you've literally yeah. seen every pro in the world come and go are there any changes that you've seen 
I mean, I think it's changed for the better. Not for the better, but like, I think it's all changed in like a good direction. Um, the one like major thing I think I see is like, there used to be like a lot of um, like pressure to like go build like big gaps and you need, you need like all these different things or your parts not complete or like you had to have a double cork or your parts not done until you have your double cork. And then I think like that kind of is like kind of dissipated now where it's like, like there's not a there's not a formula for a part anymore it's kind of like just do your thing and and that's what it is where before like like you had like it, things needed to be to a certain level or wasn't making the movie at all and now it's like there's a lot of things that like maybe shouldn't be in the movies these days but at the same time it's like it, it looks fun and people can relate to that too where it's like it, if it looks you know if it looks good then like yeah put it in the movie where years ago like there's there's shit like or just to the fact that like people still hit same things that were in movies 20 years ago and they're still in the movie you know what i mean like, like guilty was, yeah <laughs> everybody is but it's like it was at it was at a really high level and there was a lot of like a lot of pressure for a long time. And I think like the pressure has kind of gone away a little bit where it's kind of like people are more free to like kind of do whatever they want. It didn't, doesn't have to be a certain way. Do you think that it should, you sh there should be a certain level that's held to backcountry snowboarding. And like, it, I feel like that's a tough, it's really complex because some small things, when you look at like Nicholas, like sometimes he's riding a tr like something small but it looks dope. You know, he does like a natty front seven and it's like, yeah. you know, <clears throat> but then there's a lot of people that try and pull off this like really small kind of like, you know, the AMs need to be better than the pros. You know what I mean? That's kind of like how I like to look at it. Jake OE said that yeah. on the podcast really like that. Yeah. I mean like the Nicholas shit is like <clears throat> that dude can hit whatever the hell he wants and it'll be a shot. Like I wouldn't film with him and sauce fit. This can be a, my next thing and it was kind of like whoa this is like this is a different scene but uh sorry well, yeah what would, like i'm just regaining my thoughts i got stuck thinking about nicholas and sauce <laughs> <laughs> no i'm just, i guess uh, yeah yeah curiosity like, oh sorry you, you've you've gathered I, like I, I don't know i think like like to me like being a professional snowboarder like it means something to me and I want to still hold things to a certain level of like, okay, like, you know, like, okay, this guy still deserves to get paid to go snowboarding. And I think a lot of people just like throw that out the window and have like no respect for like what being a professional snowboarder means. And they're just like, yeah, whatever. It's sick. People on the internet are going to love that. You know, people like, on the internet. <laughs> like i don't know there used to be like a certain bar that you had to maintain to like be a pro snowboarder and it's like definitely kind of totally because like you down. would you would have wanted your mentors and your peers and the community and the people like you know you're the young guy in the wildcats you want people like pavo jf devin martin to be like this guy can hang and he and there's a reason why he's out sledding with us like this guy is on our level and he's and is and then you go to the premiere and you watch you know your clips and someone like Devin comes up to you and goes yo that back seven was really sick that jump that you guys found was awesome mm -hmm. it's like that means a lot where you know, those, that it, it, yeah that can get lost after, pretty quickly after promo copy I remember we were at like this Burton meeting in Whistler and Jeremy Jones was like he was like yo you had really sick footy this year and I was kind of like 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 who's behind me you know i was like oh shit thanks dude and that and that right there is to me the most addicting like i'm addicted to that like if somebody like that i really like yeah like the way they snowboard if they go like yo that was a sick clip especially if there's somebody who were in your shoes at one point and they're you know someone like a devon like if Devin tells you your clip's sick, it's 
probably pretty sick. He's not going to just, <laughs> he's not going to just say like, Oh, your switchback five, that was 20 feet. And you were barely off the ground on the most boring role that we hit in 1994 <laughs> with Rob Dow for a Vans ad. <laughs> well, that Scott surface was just learning to shoot photos on and he even hit the jump. You know, he's not going to say yeah. it was sick, you know, if yeah. it, and then when you get like um, someone with some serious credentials to say like, yo, that part was dope that actually means something. And I'm assuming when you watch videos like joy and you see like, you know, Nick Baden and uh, like red and, you know, Sage and people like that, you're, yeah. you're probably kind of juiced that those guys are kind of carrying the torch. Oh, totally. Yeah. Those guys care like about making shit legit, like Ben Ferg and they want to do like six stuff. And it, and it shows like like big time just broke in here i just what's gonna close the door there's a dog breaking dog dog breaking there no worries um no for sure it's nice to like see that people still care for sure because i'm not and i think too like there was less production companies and everything too so it was kind of like easy to not care for a little bit it was like oh i'm just shooting this for instagram anyway and now it's kind of like you know people are making movies and <laughs> he's in here like you can kind of like find like i feel like there's a lot of niche ways to go about your snowboarding now but if you want to go in a direction where you have like mass respect from the peer your peers and the community your riding needs to be at a certain level. I think like I'm mm -hmm. down to be like, yo, like I like watching you ride at Seymour and stuff, but it's until that you go to those Mount Seymour hits and ride them better than the people in a young Brown Walsh that I I'll actually be <laughs> impressed. Like, damn, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. you did a switch backside rodeo nine on, you know, city booter. And you actually went <laughs> as big as you can go. Like that was sick. Cause yeah. you know, <laughs> so like, no, it's nice to keep things at a, at, at a certain level i just yeah where you just like yeah you want to do better and you want to like you want to hit sick shit do cool tricks and like just get good shots i think it's like important to have a certain level to to maintain and i'm assuming your mentors when you were younger let you know that that's kind of the formula for success is like you know and then now you're kind of seeing well i me too like i see so much shit on the internet and i'm like is this guy trying to be a pro snowboarder who's like respected in the community and like, <laughs> yeah. or is he trying to just, you know, leak through the cracks and get free gear and like somehow has found a way to like be a pro snowboarder in the digital age. And it's like, kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, oh, totally. and it's, it's, I think more than ever, it's, it's very evident, like, who deserves to get paid and who doesn't you know what i mean to me anyway when i scroll through the instagram I'm like damn that that front seven is that's a clip like that was a hammer that was big he popped he like did it all proper it's 2021 he should be significantly better than me or you <laughs> or devin like <laughs> like like way better than us and it's like when you see those moments you're like damn like there's this one kid in whistler his name's jack mcdougall yeah he's I've like he, he just too. has like some rogue clips that are like on mountain, but it's like, he has the, the it factor. It's like, yeah, dude. I I'm actually like, was just watching this edit randomly of him the other night where like, see so like back seven first track. Is that it? Yeah. And I was thinking that same thing. I was like, dude, if, if that dude is like not on the resort, you know, like he's like out with a film crew and like gets to see the terrain that's out there. Be sick. Like that dude definitely has got it figured out. And he's he on DC. Ika's his team manager. If I was Ika, I would be like, that guy has it. Like he has that, like the talent there to be able to hang with someone like Ika, who the last DC edit is really sick, but it's yeah. crazy to see the team manager Ika being like one of the strongest backcountry riders still on the team. It's like, <laughs> yeah, he's got, <clears throat> Ika's got the best style and best pop. It's like, yeah i love it too it's like it's like he doesn't age either like his style doesn't age he like same style with the goggles and the hairs coming out it's like nothing ages at all <laughs> no he looks his neck's a little more sore yeah totally no he looked <laughs> amazing in that last little bit um without yeah, a doubt sure. when you're hanging out with some of those guys you know you see 
arrow that you haven't seen in a while or you see Devin or whoever and you have a conversation about you know backcountry snowboarding right now what's kind of the consensus are people like wow it's like better than ever or people are like damn like we used to go bigger back in the day or like what are, what are people saying <laughs> uh, I don't even know really like I haven't I wouldn't say I've like talked to those certain people about any of that and like the people that I would have like say just in New York with Ben Ferg like he wants to ride like the sickest shit possible. Like he's not half-assing anything. He wants to like <clears throat> film a really good movie, you know? And uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like people are just fired up to shred and like some, you know, there's like this, like there's like this wave in snowboarding where it's like, like, yeah, but that looks really fun. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. it's not gnarly, but it looks fun which is sick too, but like, I think it's gonna get back into like some gnarlier shit too, like. Totally. Like, and I think there's an avenue for both, but if you're gonna do the fun thing, you need to realize that you need to be the best at the fun <laughs> thing. And mm -hmm. to be the best at making something that everybody else can hit, that the average Joes that just go ride Whistler Blackcomb can all hang on to, to be the best at riding that kind of feature, you have to be so, you need to be like a Scott Stevens or a Bodie Merrill that's just like a freak of nature that is so talented. And you have to be better than those guys because those guys are all vets at this point. And it's like, I don't know. I feel like a lot of those older guys have really <laughs> yeah. held on to their um, to their merits over the years. For sure. And I think like, I mean, a lot of shredders, like, like, like when UC retired, like he was not ready to retire. Like he was like getting better. Yeah, a lot of people are just like have, haven't even seen their peak yet. You know, that's the thing. I think that it used to be if you hit twenty five, you're done. Well, there's a lot of people now mm -hmm. that are like into their thirties. Like uh, I look at Belzil when he did his best tricks, um, filming with the Man Boys. It was all like thirty five plus. You know what I mean? And I'm like, damn. Mm -hmm. Like even Rasmus go going into, I think he's thirty three now. And it's not like I don't think that in three years from now, Chris isn't going to be able to film some of his best video parts yet. Yeah, which, totally. is, which is exciting for some people who like, you know, if you take care of your shit and you want it that bad, you can still have it. Mm -hmm. Totally. And I think so much of like backcountry snowboarding is just like, is knowing what you want and then knowing where to go to get it, you know? Like, and then over the years, you just figure out like, okay, I'm going to go here for this trip and i'm i want to hit this and this and i want this type of footage you kind of can like just navigate it a little better than just like i'm gonna hit that because i can do a 540 on it that doesn't like it's not even gonna make the movie you know like you're not you're not wasting your time anymore you're like just gonna hit stuff that's like just it's either gonna make the movie or like you're just doing runs for shit like for fun and those, there's a few guys that do ride like more finesse and maybe not some of the biggest, well, they do ride big shit. Sorry. But like they ride those small poppy jumps that I feel like a lot of people are trying to make like really, really sick again, you know, and I'm down with the, the get in there with the fisheye absinthe kind of look, you know, for a couple of shots, but mm -hmm. you know, a full length video like that, I kind of like to see the guy and everybody likes to see the one or two guys go rogue and go and like, go like ride a line more savage than anybody else or go hit a huge jump. And if you're going to be the finesse guy, you just need to realize that the finesse guys you're going against are people who are like Arthur Luongo and mm -hmm. Kevin Backstrom who are freaks of nature who like, <laughs> everyone's like this side hit craze to like film on just like slushy side hits and go yeah. three feet in the air. It's like, if you're going to be an am who's inspiring to be the next generation of side hit riders, you need to be better than Arthur. <laughs> yeah no like arthur's clips on the mountain are insane <laughs> yeah they're nuts i was sick when he did the side hit one like out here seymour and whistler it's like damn that guy just came and shut it down <laughs> yeah totally and i like and then there's me being like oh you know i haven't got like a clip in the background you maybe i'll go out there with rob may and shoot like and then i see like the next day where he landed in comparison i'm like rob don't don't share that photo <laughs> nobody can see that like delete that <laughs>
Yeah. And I don't want to seem like the old guy where you have to be like, it's all about just going bigger. You know what I mean? Like, obviously the style thing, there's a lot to incorporate into that conversation, but like, I'm, I'm glad to see we're on the same program there. No, for sure. It's going to be a good mix. And I mean, it's sick to watch people go big and you need to see that jacket flapping every once in a while. Who's, your, who's some of your favorite jacket flappers out there right now? <laughs> uh, my favorite shredders, like right now, would be like Mikkel and um, Arthur. Even those two, that, that's amazing. And how does it feel to have ridden with Mikkel for his entire career and see him win natural selection? Yeah, so sick. And you know, it's cra- that was crazy because like, I like... I kind of like knew it was gonna it was gonna happen. <clears throat> it was, and and then I had a little leak. I was like, okay, I heard, I heard Ben Mickle finals today, and I was just like, okay, <laughs> this is sick. And then, uh, I was just thinking, okay, if Ben lands what he's trying, he'll win. But like the way Mikkel like dissects the mountain, like before he, like he just like looks at it and he's like, the way he just like super calculated. Like it's gonna be hard to beat that. So, but yeah, anyway, and then I, yeah. It was sick, sick that Mikkel won and those guys all rode super well. Yeah, he's a, he's a savage. So you, you I like that you kind of elaborated there on Mikkel's like talent. You know, you've spent so many days, years, a lot of time out there with him. Like, what do, what do you think Mickle brings to the backcountry that a lot of riders don't have? Because he looks good out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm like, damn, more people should do that. So crazy. Yeah. Well, you know what? It's, it's, not, that, it's not that easy. <laughs> it's like, there's certain things like that he'll, he'll, want to do or like like you know when he does like those crazy like the tree redirects and shit like that like when he gets into that mindset i'm like okay like i don't see it at all but like i'm here to help you build this thing like <laughs> it doesn't compute to me at all I'm like okay cool <laughs> i'm just here to help and he makes it work and yeah i don't know like sometimes he'll get you to build his in runs like maybe 10 15 different times but like he's just he's just so talented and like yeah crazy to ride with and like like there's so often too where like he'll go first and land the first trick land it first go you know and then like you know when you're filming like you go you get your trick and then you wait till the next guy gets his trick and sometimes he's waiting for me to get a trick for like a while and then he gets to go again (laughs) but i can tell like i can tell when mickle takes off immediately if he's gonna land or not like it's just like like if he just and usually he lands but it's like there's he just he's so composed on the takeoff that is you just know like okay if everything's gonna work out perfectly and he's gonna stomp us like he just has like this <clears throat> this finesse where he's just such a good shredder yeah he's he is he when i heard he was going to natural selection I kind of felt like he was going to win too. Cause I was like, I, I don't, and I kind of feel like he was underrated as far as I don't think a lot of people would have picked him for the win, but I think his years of experience yeah. riding jumps, step down, like riding every type of backcountry feature mm-hmm. plus his freakishly talent abilities, talented abilities. I was like, I think this is a recipe for a W here. and like you know he he over rotates the back three and just goes to a back five and when you've been snowboarding as long as mickle it's like you can make those crazy things happen for most people you over rotate the back three you go back five you're not going to land that back five (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah, no he's he's a freak like just so talented yeah i think we started filming together like standing sideways no Oh, standing sideways, he, oh my God, he broke his, he was coming to film with us in Canada and then he broke his ankle at X Games, in the bar at X Games. Uh, someone was like, like, I'll give you, he tried to do a backflip on the ground in the bar in, in Aspen and he broke his ankle, but um, 
anyway so then he was like done for the winter and then i think he shot some park stuff but then the next winter we started filming together a lot for 13. And then we've pretty much been together since that episode for one winter he did uh well and then last one totally the crew's been you mark you mark you see mickle that's like when i think of you in the last eight years yeah i got those three guys and you and you guys have filmed some amazing shit over the the course of the last decade together yeah, yeah we, was, we had a good time for sure like a lot of fun stuff and like yeah we just had a good time natural selection who do you think should be there you know, we touched base on it. Like, who do you think going into this year you would like to see riding there? And would you like to be invited to that event? Mm, I've done a couple of them now, and it's just not my scene at all. Like I mentioned before, I just I don't excel in a competition format. It's just, like, I hate just, like, somebody, like, telling you, like, okay, you're dropping and you're like, no, I'm gonna wait. I gotta. I'm. I'm not gonna drop right now. It's kind of foggy and flat light. They're like, no, you are, because yeah, forty million people like, are watching. I don't know. Just like that's just not like <clears throat> what backcountry shredding is for me. But uh, I do really like appreciate the event as a whole, and um, and I like to watch it for sure. But uh, like, who would go? Like, it'd be sick if Kazu could make it. Um, be sick if Nicholas could shred. Terry, I don't know, man, there's actually, there's so many people, if you, like, really break it down to, like, who would be sick to watch, Blavelt, like, Blavelt for sure, um, I don't know, there's, there, there's a big list for sure. There's a big list, and I hope a few of those, I would like to see as a wild card, and I don't, I, I don't know if you would even want to do it. But I'd like to see, I mean, Torstein thrown in the mix there. Yeah, I think Torstein. Cool see, but Ika, I feel like, just yeah. to see, like, I, I don't know. Like, it seems like to me that he's still, like, obviously got something to prove and he's still, like, out there. And I think that you mentioned there that it's just just not what you're trying to achieve by filming in the backcountry and, and anymore by attending an event like that. It's just, you know, different headspace. I agree. Um, but I, I wonder if Ika would want to go to a, an event like that. I think that it would be kind of cool because when I see him skate and stuff, yeah, he's not, like he's still really competitive when you see <laughs> yeah. him like ride the park behind people, you, he gets like, were you, you kind of are relaxed, you know? And then you have your moments where, okay, I'm going to send it now because I'm feeling it. I'm the same way, but I feel like Ika has a competitive nature where I feel like he'd be good. If there's a wild card this year, mm. my votes for Ika. <laughs> yeah totally no i think he would ride really good for sure i don't yeah i don't know if he would do it to be honest i feel like he's like kind of like he's you know he's like half tm half shredder and i think he's really stoked on that but like i don't know he, yeah he, i don't know I never it'd be asked. sick to have like a low key like less um less like massive scale event and you have a bunch of old timers <laughs> <laughs> like just anybody over 30 and it's just like and you try like similar course you know and then you got yeah. like people like you know Ika and Devin and it's more of like a more of a fun event not on NBC you know what I mean that's the funny thing I think about natural selection where you can see the longevity of like backcountry snowboarding where you, you watch like a a slope style contest and McMorris is the oldest dude there. Then you watch natural selection and he's the youngest. It's everybody's in their thirties. Yeah. That was, that's really wild to see the entire group of natural selection riders be people that are in their thirties. It kind of goes to show that all their sponsors, that's like, well, the really young 20 year old expiration date of like being 24 and not wanting to be a pro, which a lot of my friends I felt like kind of grew up in that early 2000s bubble where they were like, oh, I'm 24 now, you know, I, I didn't make it. So it's over. And I'm like, damn, dude, like who knows what yeah. would have happened at 35? Like you could have been the best in the world. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Like to me, always growing up, I was like 30 is the cutoff. Yeah. 30, you're done. Yeah. Mine was 25. I'm like 25, you're done. And I filmed one of my last video parts in my own head, like 25 not i got dropped by everybody i was like i'm done this is for fun and i'm out i'm old 
nine years later, eight years later, I'm still like a couple more years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Uh, uh, yeah, it's sick. Um, video parts. What are you most proud of? What video part do you reflect on and go like, damn, that was when Mikey felt unstoppable. I can name <laughs> a few, but I want you to pick it out. Uh, for sure. Uh, Burton 13 movie. That was like, definitely um probably yeah probably my best part i think and actually i remember when i got the first like rough edit of my part <clears throat> and it was like the two songs and everything and i was at peak and i was placed in california and i like went to the garage and watched it and i was kind of like okay and then i went inside and and showed them and it was like damn like have a better winner why don't you it's like some <laughs> shit like that um but that was like definitely my probably my best part like my part the year after that was like some people were like that was better than 13 but i think i just hated the song so much in that and i wasn't down but the year after 13 is when i won like the x games real snow um that with like a different edit obviously but same footage and then um yeah so probably those two and then like wear it well with white out films would be another one where, where like because the wear it well i had the last part of that movie arrow had the first part and like i don't know like we were young and like we partied so hard that year like just like garfs buffalo bills shred like like I don't know the way the winter aligned was like crazy to be able to just like shred 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 party party hangover shred 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 like I don't know it, uh, that was like a crazy year um I think that was like oh no never mind um yeah those, those parts for sure are probably my most memorable yeah I, I feel sick when you there's a couple of years. I don't, I don't feel like that right now, but when like all the stars align and you kind of feel unstoppable, like when you're dropping into a jump or you're riding, you, you like, you kind of, you've been landing the last few days in a row and you kind of aren't like, Oh, I hope this is going to work. You're so confident. And like, when you drop in, it's just complete flow state. And I've heard from some people that were riding with you that year. Um, Leyland, your filmer, Mark, Mickle. I've talked to UC. It's like, people are saying that those years, it was just like, if you were going to try something, you were going to like, you, you were, you weren't following a lot those years. It was a lot yeah. of land. Which <laughs> must feel good if you're going to try a trick, like a cab seven, just like, all right, let's try cab seven. And you're like, here we go. I hope this works. You're like, this is going to work. It always works for Mike. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Thank you. But I, I think like I would, I was just, I would never, go to a feature that like say didn't work for a cab seven and be like, I need a cab seven. So I'm going to try it off this. I would just like, just kind of do things off of like features that I knew were going to work for certain tricks. And like, just kind of like, I think too, that like, say like 13, for example, we had so much footage that year. Cause like that year, Mark and UC and John Jay were doing real snows. I wasn't doing it, but like, I was going out with them like all December and they were like hustling. And I'd be out there like kind of hustling, but I, at the same time, I'm like, I don't really like, I don't have to like be hustling, but yeah. Cause like, that was when the edits came out in like February or end of January or whatever. Um, but like we just started the year with a lot of footage and then just like, we just had so much footage. So it was like, it was kind of easy to be confident because it was like there was like a nice cushion. Plus, we had crazy conditions that you do like snow and, and like no wind. And we just like did some sweet trips early season. And then, what did we do? I don't know, a lot of Whistler stuff too. That's why like UC would leave his truck and, at the airport and he would just like fly in and out. And uh, yeah, a lot of just, yeah, we kind of nailed it that season for conditions, basically. It's like really good. And it must feel that pretty nice. Too, actually. Sorry, continue. 
Oh, I was just gonna say that year too, like doing when we filmed for 13, like there's so many years, you know, when you're like, you're at the tail end of the season and then you start venturing, trying to find like good snow. And then you find all these sick zones, but they're far out. And you're like, oh man, like gotta come back to this when the snow's good. <clears throat> that 13 year, we just loaded up like tons of gas and we just go straight to those zones like, that were far, but like you would never get to them until like later in the season kind of. It's like, we just focused on like, okay, well, we know this is sick terrain and we haven't, we haven't ridden here yet, but like, let's just go there right away. Let's not wait till like, it's the end of the season. And we're like, damn it, there's no, the snow shit. And how much of a, like, you know, you obviously want to get clips, but I mean, you've spent a profound amount of your time, your life in the back country. How much, like you must get a lot of joy out of, you know, going over that extra ridge and finding a new gap and finding a new jump. So like, how important is that to you now to just ride new train that you haven't ridden on before and film on like fresh stuff? Yeah, it's kind of the most important to me just because I mean, like if I would go hit like form step down or something, like I'm like, I'm probably not going to have that much fun. <laughs> and I think just because like, I'm not necessarily like, trick based you know or like if like if, you know for sure if i hit did something on that, i'd be stoked but like it's not going to be as fun to me as like hitting something that's never been hit before you don't know the speed you know it's like all the variables are in the air like it's not like for form step down for example like you drop here you land there here's the here's the road to snowmobile up back up like everything's already figured out for you and i kind of like to like figure it all out and it's like less productive but more rewarding for sure yeah it's definitely brings that element of like adventure so you don't know what's around the corner and then you have that feeling of just like getting a clip in the backcountry on like a pillow stack or a gap that hasn't been filmed on like is super super sick and the footage looks so good because no one's seen it before and it is, it does get really, really tiring when you watch footage on the same jumps. And I didn't realize that when I first started because of my excitement to just be in the backcountry. And mm -hmm. I was just so excited to be just out there. And someone's like, oh, is someone already back seven this. I'm like, I don't care. I, 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 I'm out here. Like, this is <laughs> yeah. so exciting. And now that I've spent yeah. a long time out there, it's like, I appreciate when I see people hit new features, especially in the last yeah. two years, now that I'm good enough to, snowmobile out there comfortably and feel like if i go over the next ridge i'm i feel comfortable and confident in my sledding skills that i wouldn't hold up the crew and like it does feel really good to be out there with a crew that can navigate the mountains at a high level so you can be productive you can go that next you know you can go over the next valley and like go and just keep mm. searching because you have a crew that's dialed but like when we first came out there like i was like I don't know how to sled. Like, what do I do? And somebody else was <laughs> yeah. pretty loose and rusty was pretty good. And oh, yeah, you know, but like you, you to dial in a full crew that can get to those new locations is something truly special. And you've been on that tip with Mark and UC and, you know, your filmers and stuff like that, where you guys have had the, the ability to go and find new stuff, which you've been producing for the last, you know, 10 years, you're not filming the form step down, perfect jump. And you brought some of the best trick. Uh oh. Why why don't you ever use rap music for your for your parts? You love rap. Mm -hmm. Why isn't rap yeah, Mikey to rap would be the best thing ever? I have a little bit, but like I kind of always thought like I don't know, like sometimes like I think like rap music generally in my mind works better like in like more of a fun sense like in like a Wildcats movie kind of thing and then like when I was filming like <clears throat> the other like say for Burton movies and stuff I don't know I was kind of just hyped on like let the editor choose like whatever song he's hyped to edit to and then like and I did have what I had a snowboarder movie. What I had like Action Bronson, 
which I like kind of picked that, but not really. But like, I could just tell that like the editor wasn't down with like editing to that song. And then oh, the next nice. year for the snowboarder movie, I think that next movie, I only watched it once. I think the EPMD, I, I don't even remember. Anyway, I, I have had some rap music songs before, but I kind of think like the best part comes out when the editor chooses the song that he's down to edit to. That's a big thing. Cause if the editor's editing some song that he hates, it's like listening to the same song on repeat that he hates that you can't imagine he's having a good time. So he probably wants to wrap up filming your, like yeah. editing your part. Totally. You know? That's like, like when I first watched my Burton 13 part, which was two songs and they're two songs that I would never listen to on like my personal time, like not my style at all, but it worked like the editor, Jeremy Pettit, like had a vision and he was like, this is, how it's gonna go and I was like damn that like I'm down with that I don't know it was I <clears throat> yeah I liked it and I also like that too, like rap music can be like pretty hard to get too like with all the samples and shit for like how expensive it is and this and, or it can be really expensive so I think I like I had gotten shut down a couple times like really early on and just kind of like never pursued it too much more just like all right whatever Ah, fuck it. Whatever, dude. I mean, I would like to use more rap personally, but I also feel that sometimes I just feel like if you use a rap song and I listen to the words of it that some people actually listen to when they listen to the rap song, I'm like, damn, does that really yeah, yeah. reflect what I'm trying to put out in life? Because if, if you listen to just the 100%. beat, if you listen That's to the beat it works and the vibe. Like party movie scenes where it's like, okay, like, things are already a little looser like expectations are lower they're not taking this so seriously yeah totally instead of like i'm gonna f your effing you know bitch <laughs> from behind or whatever with all these yeah. you know you're Just like holy powder yeah and you're like and you're like doing a heel side turn you're like damn like this is a it's it's sick but it's like a heavy flex in 2021 to to pull off a rap song as like a white male kind of i feel <laughs> it's tough because i would like to use it and i'm yeah. from winnipeg and we always used to use rap music mm -hmm. and i always use rap but in the last couple of years i'm like damn it's kind of has to be somewhat tasteful or else i feel like it it could be a little off-putting to a, a certain group i don't know maybe yeah, no, for sure. You gotta tread lightly these days, Joey. Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm. <laughs> yeah, I know. How, yeah, which you know, I don't want to tread too lightly. You know, some people need to like <laughs> chill the fuck out, and then there's some people that need to be treading a little bit like more lightly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, both parties need to meet in the middle. You know, there's people that are yeah. hypersensitive over everything. That's like just shut up. Like I don't have time for this. For you to be mad at everything that I'm doing. Like. Mm -hmm. But then there's other people that are like genuinely dated bad people that like need a refresher to kind of get with the time. So it's like, you know, you got to meet in the middle, just like be a good person. But like, you know, if you say something offensive, you know, take accountability for it and move on. <laughs> yeah, totally. I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, tricky times these days. Can you, sorry, can you hear Chili freaking out there? I think he's just heading out for a little walk. Oh, no, I can't hear him. Okay, perfect. No, Chili, Chili's good. Okay. What project are you working on right now? Where's Mikey's footage going? What, what are we expecting to see over the coming years? Yeah, we're doing a, well, <clears throat> we're doing a movie this year with like Mikko, Danny Davis, Mikey Cicerelli, Solars. I think Gigi's on. Um, Gigi? Yeah. Gigi. It's like, it's not a Burton movie. Oh, I thought it was a Burton movie. And I, was, I think he oh, yeah. was back on. And I was like, oh, my, this is big yeah, it'll news. Be like, it's like pretty Burton heavy for sure, but it's not a Burton movie at all. Um, but I think he's on. I haven't heard any confirmation on that in a while. So grain of salt. But it'd be sick if Gigi was on. Um, and I think uh, like Nick Russell. Sick. Um, Elena Haidt, I believe. Anyway, it'll be like a pretty small crew, but uh, yeah, it's not just a Burton movie. Um, but uh, yeah, that'll come out next fall. And then like this year, I didn't really, really, like I put out like some clips, but I'm kind of saving like <clears throat> a bunch of footage to put out in this movie. 
Totally. Sure. And then I'll do like a little bit of time with Ben Ferg for his movie. And um, yeah, that'll be this winter. Film with Ben. What's, what's your level of like, you know, Burton 13 part to now? Clearly you're going to be riding different terrain, but like how excited are you to film and stack footage? Like, are you in a place that you just had it? You're thing to prove do you still want to get after it and you know send it or are you down like are you like willing to scale it down a little bit more like i'm wondering what your excitement level is going into this winter yeah like i'm super jacked up for the winter i don't like i definitely want to like you know push it and hit some big stuff but at the same time like i'm not gonna like let that dictate my days out there like if it presents itself i'm down but i'm not gonna like go on the hunt to search certain things and I, I think so much in the last like year or two I just can't bring myself to like build a jump for half a day on like a sunny powder day I just can't do it I, like I just I've done that so much like spend a whole day building a jump on like a really nice sunny powder day and I just like there's not one bone in my body that like can do that anymore I just can't do it so yeah, definitely more free ridey, freestyle stuff. But um, like, definitely not afraid to build something. But I'm not gonna like jack up a wedge. That's for sure. Which is crazy because you were your era was like the cheese wedge yeah. era. Like you know, it was all wedges. I think that's why I'm so over it. It was like, it was all wedges. I yeah, it sucks for me because you guys were like the people I looked up to. So then I did that and it sucked because I mean, like I now I'm in the same position as you. Like, I don't want to build like I have wedges in my part this year and I just don't even care about them. Some people are like, yeah. dude, those are your best shots. They're carrying your video. I'm like, I don't I don't want it like, yeah, but yeah. I don't want that anymore. I would I want to go snowboarding as much as I can in the mountains and get better at snowboarding in different ways. Like yeah. I see you go a lot more like organic natty features, you know, find a cool like rogue way to get into this like weird little line and then back 180 over the little cliff fan at the bottom. Like that's what I want. Yeah. I'm way more, I'm way more into like how many times can I strap in in the day than <laughs> how many blocks I can build on this fucking jump. Like <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, sometimes I'll see like a clip where they put up a huge, wedge and like we were never on like utah level of like yeah they're crazy these, out there wedges are, but like you know we definitely built some big wedges and like I, sometimes i see footage still of like <clears throat> these big ass builds i'm just like oh my god that's like hurts my back <laughs> unless you're gonna do something like sage like hit uh you know that gap whatever they hit i don't know i'm drawing blank right now chad's gap um, oh, yeah. you know, I get it. You know, you, you want that, you, you want to be able to hang with the Romans and stuff like that. And you, yeah, yeah. you want to have your, you want that hell. Yeah. All, all the best to you have, have fun on that. But if you build like a 14 foot stacker, massive, like huge booter, and then you do a backside seven on a roll, I'm like, what <laughs> yeah. the hell are you doing? Like, why did you, totally. there is no feature and you're like found a roll and you're like, well, let's just stack a bunch of blocks here and then jump into this roll. And then you do a back seven melon. I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> that's what you did with that day. <laughs> yeah, and that happens all the time too. And it's like, oh, oh yeah. man, because I think people get so stressed out and they're like, oh, I gotta, I still gotta do, do my job today. And it's like, well, probably you could have called in sick on that day. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Whatever, What's your least favorite still... thing to see in the backcountry these days? Was my favorite thing? No, oh, least favorite thing. Oh, my least favorite thing. Oh, my God. It's got to be the one footer. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's funny, actually, like, uh, <clears throat> it's like in the fall, I get a trainer and I try to, like, get ready for the season. And, and she's, like, asking me, she's like, so how often are you, like, riding goofy and you're riding regular and i'm like ah it's getting less as i'm getting older and then she's like do you ever ride with one foot out of your binding i'm like never <laughs> never ever that was my favorite thing i've ever heard on the podcast <laughs> it was so fast too what's your least favorite thing in snowboarding oh it's got to be the one footer 
<laughs> Latin and snowboarding. And, and like, I don't mean any like disrespect to the people who are doing it. It's just not for me. It's not for me either. I, I like like when people do it on certain features, I'm, I'm for it, you know, and I think that it adds an element to the overall video. If somebody does it tastefully in the video, but for me and my parts, I'll never have anything one footed because just not what I'm, I'm inspired to do. Like a front three indie with one foot out. I'm like, I want to grab, I want both of my feet strapped in and I want that feeling <laughs> over the one foot dangling. <laughs> Plus I feel like I'm kind of a hazard. And if one of my feet was out, I feel like I would just have the, I feel like that's the way I would be like, Oh, Jody died today. He was, and he was one footed <laughs> and you'd be like, Oh no, he, he, he would have hated that. <laughs> his leg came out of his body. <laughs> so <clears throat> Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite thing about backcountry snowboarding these days then? I think maybe more and more every year too that there's like like I mentioned earlier like there's not like the one way to do it anymore it's not like you know all these cheese wedges it's kind of like you know if you want to go do this you can go do that and I don't know people just like finding their own lane and not following the the path of like you know like <clears throat> you know like when we would have grown up Mac Dog and it was like all cheese wedges on rollers and that was kind of like then going into filming in the back country you're kind of like i need to find a roller and build a cheese wedge on it because that's what you do and now it's kind of like you don't have to do that you don't have to do one thing you can just like kind of take your own path a little bit more totally that's probably more my I like that. I like, I like the lane thing. I like when people like get in their lane and they do their thing in their lane really well. And Nick Russell, mm -hmm. who's going to be in um, uh, the movie that you're filming for Danny, mm -hmm. he's like flow hikes to the top of the mountain, gets after it, riding these cool lines. Mm -hmm. Love it. You know what I mean? I, I like following him. I love his, his snowboarding. I love what he's, he's about. I like those when people go into their like little micro niches, but they do it well still. You know what I mean? And yeah, there's no, some sort of like, there's a skill set there that someone like me, I don't have the skill set to go to where Nick Russell is yeah. and the, and the willingness to go and like live in a tent when it's windy <laughs> and like my water overnight froze. Cause I brought the wrong, wrong water bottle. And they're like, dude, you need <laughs> to have the right water bottle or all your liquids freeze. Like now you got to drink mine and we're half the water. Like, what'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, like, like, I don't know. That seems stressful to me. So I'm happy that there's people that do it and I like watching yeah, totally. it and it's exciting, but it's uh, yeah. Yeah. It's sick. Like nobody is kind of like <clears throat> forcing certain things like I don't know I just remember like like even like back to like filming early days like promo copy and stuff you'd ride with certain people on the crew and you're like like building a cheese wedge and you're like ah oh, man this guy shouldn't like he needs to like go hit something else like <laughs> you know like this is not where he shines but like he's got it in his mind that this is like where he's gonna shine yeah and then he doesn't and then you have to be there and there's a tree on the right hand side and he keeps drifting towards the tree and you're like oh spin the other direction please <laughs> please go the other way like, when i was young i started like running with oshu like, really into step downs because oshu was like good at step downs and he knew that was like his lane and then we just like i kind of like stopped looking for rolls and just just always looking for step down i like that about your snowboarding i think that made you stand Ow, my foot just got cramped up. Oh, you have you ever had a calf cramp? Oh, I haven't had one of those in years. That was nuts. <laughs> Did you see how fast that was? Pod accident. I got hurt on the pod today. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, but I like that about your snowboarding a lot. Like the step down ride, and like all of you guys, like that. The young generation of wildcats snowboarders, eight mile kids, like that group to me had the best style in the backcountry. It's like they rode cheese wedges, like some natural stuff slashes step downs. And it was all, and it was sick. Cause when you hit a step down and you were part of that crew, like the U arrow, Ika, Benji, got to throw Benji in there. Like yeah. you're going off, you're going slow. But when you take off that step down, you guys pop so much that you're like four feet above <laughs> immediately. And then, 
you know, Ollie G's in the landing. He shoots the photo and it's or Scott and it's, it's, per, it's perfection. It really <laughs> made me want to go out into the back country. Like that, <laughs> that group. Sick. Well, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that was sick, dude. Arrow switchback nine. That one year was dope. Um, I think we talking about that recently. Yeah. Was you it, gotta a, watch was it. That when they did the get out of town? Maybe I, it was like, um, I, I don't know. I, I can't tell you which video mm. part it is, but he has a switchback nine on a step down. And I was like, damn, that's a heavy trick on a step down. Yeah. And he did, does oh. it the same way as his front 10 and promo copy off that jump. Yeah. From the, like the exact same come around. Like it's cause it's like after the front side 180 on a front 10, you're doing a switchback mm. side nine. And he like does the exact same like indie poke rotation. Yeah. Very, very sick. Eric can like, he can switch back nine anything it was just kind of like him looking for the best thing he could switch back nine basically do you think that you would have gotten to where you are today without riding with those great snowboard like people get good at their craft when they hang out with other people that are exceptional at their craft and you hung out with you've been incorporated and surrounded by the best snowboarders ever since a young age from sean white to to nowadays it's like yeah, I mean, yeah. definitely not at all. Like, even, you know, like, after Arrow, we're, like, filming with Arrow and stuff, like, then to film with UC and just the way, that like, he looks at things, like, you know, like, he would be like, no, that's not a, that's not just a step down, that's a double line, because look at that thing above it, you know, and just, like, opening your eyes to that, or, like, even with Mikkel, because I look at the mountain from top to bottom, and Mikkel looks at it from side to side, so like he and he'll be like that's how you get more trannies and you can just hit more shit where i'm kind of like okay there's this takeoff and here's a landing and that's how i look at it yeah and michael's like no 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 it's side to side and once i learned that he goes side to side now i can always like pick up what he's gonna ride before he says it but um i don't know just like learning things like that from yeah no for sure like it's all about the crew you're with and and just like i don't know even like the years where we were doing like like real snow years it was kind of like okay like we got to kind of like be on another on a different level and we need to get this kind of footage and this kind of footage and like building that and like uc was always really good at like <clears throat> curating like he'd like we like we'd film a double line or something and then he's like okay now we need a really big jump and now we need some sort of transition thing. Like he could like, he knew how to piece together like a really good part. I kind of, so, I feel like I, I've struggled with that over the course of my career. Cause I'll be like, oh, I'm at this thing. I should hit this thing. And sometimes just because you're at a feature, it doesn't mean that's going to add to your part. If yeah. like, if you're like, dude, especially watching like the newer videos like did you watch the dust box movie it's just like mm. that movie was amazing and it's like a lot of that was the music the editing the kits that the people are wearing and mm. then the spots and then the personality if you mix all those five things together you truly get like a really amazing movie and that dust box yeah. movie like brought it together kind of like a like you see like formulating how to make a perfect part but that's only half the battle. You can formulate all the best footage in the world with your filmer, but if an editor doesn't share and have the ability to put together your part in a way that actually represents you and sells your personality to the people as like, damn, this guy's awesome, which I've <laughs> kind of felt like knowing you and then seeing a lot of your parts. I'm like, damn, they, some of the burden parts, I felt like they missed out on like marketing your personality i'm like you know like i'm like damn like they need to hang out with mike more because like <laughs> it's pure comedy and you're kind of missing like the selling feature of that individual <laughs> <laughs> they really let go heavy on the the laugh lifestyles <laughs> oh yeah totally yeah yeah I've good, been... good looking guy on a snowmobile laughing no. it's just like <laughs> oh, man. Get... one time we we flew to mount hood to go to a studio in a garage and i filmed a laugh and then i went home <laughs> <laughs> they needed one more laugh shot that was an expensive laugh yeah <laughs> okay two months to live what's on the bucket list mm. you got a bucket list maybe you're not a bucket list person it's fine 
don't have a bucket list, but um, I don't know, like even just the other day shredding, it's like I was saying to Gabe, like there's not one thing I do that's more fun than shredding powder. So definitely got to do powder trip, probably in the interior BC. Um, I don't know. It wouldn't be, it's not necessarily destination based on the rest of my bucket list. I'm pretty like keen and pretty good at just hanging at home, but uh, I don't know. I don't have a good answer for that. Probably watch well, the- uh, what, what are you putting in? What's an important thing that you have in your backpack that you couldn't do without in the back country? Mm -hmm. any... Hot sauce. That's good. That, see, that's what I was kind of looking for, a creative <laughs> answer. And I do the same thing on my crew. I bring up hot sauce. Yeah. Steam up your lunch and you have hot sauce out there. Great. Oh, dude. man, because like I dread, I hate like, I hate eating. You're just all cold and you're eating like a shitty sandwich or something. Dry. I hate dry. Yeah, you throw a bunch of hot sauce on there and you're good. Yeah, totally. You can get through, you can get through the worst of worst sandwiches with half decent hot sauce <laughs> yeah. You're like holy fuck this sandwich sucks like there's nothing on it and yeah. this tomato and lettuce is wilted and gross and the meat is sus you drench it in hot sauce <laughs> good to go sus meat sus meat um if snowboarding never worked out for you what would you be doing mm. man that's <clears throat> kind of scary to be honest i have no idea and like, I don't know. I was never really like into school or anything. I was never really like really that good at school. Um, so I don't have a good answer for that either. And it kind of scares me to think about it, to be honest. So, <laughs> so you're like, whatever, I lucked out. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kind of scares me. Yes, Mike. Oh, man. I think that I would be laying sewer pipe in Winnipeg still. Yeah. I would have worked my way up the ranks and I'd still be there and I'd be driving like a really nice, like a Dodge. Uh, no, I'd be driving like a four, like a King ranch, you know, I think. It's oh a four. yeah. Oh, nice. So uh, you're yeah. rich. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I'd be super in debt but I'd, <laughs> because you do, when you do construction for 15 years of your life, eventually you feel that you deserve to get the King ranch because you've been working so hard. So yeah. yeah. I, the King ranch, even though you wouldn't be able to afford it. I feel like that's what a lot of my friends back home <laughs> nice. do that don't and they're friends that don't have social media. You know what I mean? So they're not they're never gonna listen to this. They're like real off the grid hard working construction guys. Yeah, yeah. That's Sometimes nice. I'm like, did you need the King Ranch Super Duty 350 <laughs> Dodge Dually truck that cost a hundred thousand yeah. dollars? So like King I work hard. I'm like, catalyst, that's a bad so. idea. You drove it off the lot and it's worth 40 grand now. Or not 40, but you know, you lost 20% on it. Okay. <clears throat> 10 questions. We're going to rip through them fast. Okay. Favorite rapper. Oof. Man, that's a tough one too. I would say like, okay, there's like three rappers that if they put out something, I would be really excited to check it out rather than just saying like one favorite, but two chains, push a T and 50. He said, I'm the sucker for 50 Cent. Love them all. I like all those rappers. I feel like for me, I've been waiting on a new game album because I love the game. Oh. Um, Nipsey Hustle, but he did, which yep. sucks because he was really, I got into him when he passed. Mm -hmm. And then, and then Jadakiss. Yeah, Jadakiss is sick. Yeah. You obviously watched the battle. Yeah. Yeah. That was so good. That was, that was Thugs and 3 Six Mafia couple weeks versus they're doing them <laughs> sick <Yeah. laughs> all the all the best um okay when was the last time you jumped on a rail mm. not a box but a rail Fuck. was it with johnny lyle at grouse no, it it was definitely last year at Seymour. It was a rainbow rail, I think. Oh, nice. Yeah. I usually get a couple board sides out of the way real early in the season, and then I don't have to do them. 
anymore. Uh, I like that you picked the board slides. My favorite trick. All right. Okay. Favorite yeah. style currently and back in the day. Uh, okay. Currently, like Mikko and Arthur. Currently, and then <clears throat> back in the day, I was always like Jamie Lynn was my favorite dude. Best style. Um, Devin. Phenomenal style. Um, yeah, that's probably probably Jamie my Jamie and Devin, good good picks. Um, you're on death row, last meal. Good question. I'm such a sucker for noodle box. <laughs> you gonna hit him? You gonna hit him with the noodle box? <laughs> uh, just going crazy on noodle box these days, but uh. I don't know. Realistically, maybe like some sushi village or some sachi sushi. Ooh, there you go. The best but, sushi in, in the world. Yeah. Okay. What's the first thing you would do if you won the lottery? House on the Sunshine Coast. I, see, I like hanging out at home. So like, <laughs> it's not, not going to be like crazy, like anything too crazy. Um, yeah, probably Sunshine Coast, nice and close to home. Uh, probably interior place. I don't know. Pretty, pretty simple. She's very nice. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> Up the thread count on the on the bed and call her a day. <laughs> yeah, probably a little thread count boost. Um, favorite snowboard video of all time. Mm. Man, <clears throat> I'd have to do like at least five, I think, because like technical difficulties is like or like technical difficulties oh fuck man there's so many I remember when you're it was like tb3 and tb3 and meltdown project or maybe tb4 and meltdown project came out watch those like crazy i think that was tb3 and meltdown project anyway Meltdown Project, that when like Ingmar had last part with the Dead Kennedys song. You ever see that? I've seen it once in Whistler, I think. Okay. Very, yeah. st- like not there. So Really sick. Um, and then like technical difficulties and Decade was crazy for me. Um, Is TB4 the one with Jim Rippey does like that massive backside seven with no grab? Or am I thinking of a different snowboard? Uh, that might, the TB4 cover is rippy doing a big backflip on off this huge cliff in uh, alaska oh, okay no i don't Maybe there's the back seven in there i know which clip you're talking about though. yeah it's just like a massive back seven no grab <laughs> yeah he's going super fast it's kind of like a johan too when he was in tv oh I, you know what it's johan and like johan, yeah and he's on that big board yeah. that he's painted at the top oh the old the ogs that listen to this podcast are gonna be like you idiot but i do think i wasn't even he has a big Rippy does have on back sevy like natty in one of those. There's a good chance he does. Anyway, that and then like the Hawkinson factor and subject Hawkinson. Those ones to me too. Those were kind of actually, dude, there's this sick movie and I haven't been able to like, I know I have it somewhere, but it was called um, Project Six and it was all filmed off like the side of the highway i remember that, being, that movie being like this is awesome like you can just build jumps everywhere <sighs> anyway yeah so i'm kind of rambling now just like thinking of all the different movies but those are probably the movies that like i would have watched the most and like kind of got me the most hyped hell yeah um favorite actor or actress Mm. love me a good leo flick oh i thought you were gonna hit him with the denzel (laughs) oh denzel too yeah denzel's got a couple misses though yeah 100 percent. but then you watch training day again and you're just like damn yeah he's heavy duty for sure but uh leo's a good pick uh worst trend in snowboarding I mean, I'd say there's a lot that are like not my favorite, but like, I don't know. I think 
my least favorite trend at the moment is just like there being one way to do things where it's like, oh, you, you can't grab a method above your binding or like, you know, it's like, grab it wherever the hell you want. <laughs> um, or like, you know, like those like internet gatekeepers that are like, that's, it's not a front side indie, it's a front side air. It's like, who fucking cares? <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's my least favorite thing at the moment, but it doesn't like not losing sleep over it, but it's, it's kind of like, who cares? Like, I agree. Um, who is the GOAT? The GOAT uh, Terrier. Sick. Terrier. Oh, yeah. Um, what are you going to get up to right now, my man? Mm, What's for dinner? The box, maybe. You're going to go get some noodle box. Mikey, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on, man. Uh, you, huge, huge fan since I first moved to town. I think you've your personality and your snowboarding combined have it, i don't know to me it's that's just it, it, it's what snowboarding's kind of missing is more like mike like you got the personality and you have the skills where i look back sometimes and i know i feel like a dinosaur saying this but i look up to like you know you look at like M mikey leblanc or like mark frank montoya or jp or yourself it's like I love when the snowboarding and the personality are like sold to me together. I'm like, wow, that's who that person is. And I feel like snowboarding could have more of that, which I feel like the dust box did a really good job. I'll bring it back to them again, just because it was my favorite movie I've watched in a long time. And I was like, I was like, whoa, this is cool. This is not the same as every other video. It's comical, funny. It's snowboarding. Yeah. Could he obviously use some more powder or any powder? <laughs> well, maybe not though. Like, you know, <laughs> You know, it's like nobody wants to see me do a 50-50. And I don't know what those guys seen on like, <laughs> I don't need to see them do like a 540 off a small cornice. They kind of like, they do really good at what they do. Yeah, totally. I, I don't know. I, the Thank Tommy, you. I just want to see him do anything, you know. Yeah, just... Tommy Towns, that's the guy. <laughs> yeah, that's the guy. Yeah. I don't know him, but I'm a big fan. Yeah. All right, Mike, thanks for coming on. Enjoy the noodle box and, and take yeah, care. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. Have a good night.